Welcome back to The Quest, where you may be forgiven for thinking we've returned for a Croatian Cup final, and we have, but we've got another game to bring you as well. And what is that other game, I hear you half-heartedly cry, more to humour me than out of genuine interest, but I will tell you anyway, we've been making good progress in our time with Dynamo. Since our first episode in charge of the club, where we whooped Slavon Blupo 7-1, We've drawn with Gorica, and it's a shame that we did. We've beaten top of the table Osijek, we've beaten second in the league Varashtin, and we've beaten already qualified for Europe Rijeka, whilst our old club Lokomotiva, I am very sad to report, have lost every single game since we left. They've lost to Osijek and Varashtin and Rijeka. They've even lost to bottom of the table and already relegated Rudesh. They've got a game against Slavon Belupo on the final day of the season and they need to win it, my friends, because we are chasing them down. We are just one point behind them. And bearing in mind, when we took over, I think we were about 12 points off the pace. If we win our game and Lokomotiva draw or lose theirs, albeit against Slavon Belupo, who are not the greatest side, then we would qualify for Europe without having won the Croatian Cup. Because the team we're facing in the final is Hajduk and they've already qualified for Europe anyway. Obviously, we'd like to just ground the season by winning the Croatian Cup as well. But imagine the scenes. If we stroll into the biggest club in Croatia, rescue them from relegation, qualify them for Europe through their league position and beat our greatest rivals to secure a cup win as well. And so with three games to get to, we best get to the action straight away. We're going to play almost... The same team that you saw in our last episode. The only change we're going to make is bringing Emiliano Martinez onto the bench because he has a tight calf and will be out for a day. And in his place, I say in his place, I've actually started Beckham Avia in the last couple of games as the anchor man anyway. So he may well have started this game for us. Everybody else we introduced you to during our last episode. I'm just going to show you one more player before we get out there. And it's one that I'm quite excited about. It's Ante Pilcic, who scored in our last game. And he's incredibly quick and a good finisher. And has got flair and off-the-ball movement. And they're only 17. Already valued at potentially 8.8 .8 million. One of our other good friends who performed wonders during episode one with Dinamo has not been that good since. Is Petar Ishek, a wonder kid. And he has got a whole bevy of clubs interested in him now. Chelsea, Manchester United, PSG and Inter. Not sure he's quite at that level. But he does have a contract that's got a minimum fee release clause of just £6.5 million. So I've offered him a new deal that will increase that minimum fee release clause to £18 million. So if he does move during the summer, at least it's going to be payday for us. But we have got a big game. arguably. Our biggest since we started the quest. We're going to be taking on Hajduk in the Eternal Derby. A reminder that this is going to be over two legs. So whatever happens tonight is not finite. And we're going to have that league game against Rudesh sandwiched in between. And we are getting underway. Hajduk are playing a very narrow formation. They're the home team in this first leg. The stands are absolutely packed. And I don't think many of them are going to be supporting us. We're going to be in our 4-4-2 Brazilian box as the teams walk out. One thing I have noticed since the last episode is that the winners of the Croatian Cup do not qualify for the Europa Conference League. It's the Europa League proper. So if we were to win, we're going to be going into the tougher of the two competitions. but. Given that the finalists in this season's Europa League are young boys from Switzerland, so that destination would have been out of the running for us, they're playing Molder from Norway in the final. It does give us a little bit of hope that maybe the Europa League is a winnable competition as well. We are coming forward early. We've got Hamilton Rickard over at right back. He's played the ball to Pavic. We've got it to Beckham. Now it's out to the opposing left back. And he was in and he's had a clean sight of goal that he's... I just tried to play at the near post. I thought he was going to fire it across the keeper to the far post. But we have got another highlight coming our way again. Here is Vidovic. He drifts inside and then swings a ball over to Isek. And he's in and he shuffled the hips. 
and he has slotted past the keeper. We've not even played eight minutes yet. It's the wonder kid who's on target for us. We are silencing the Hajduk fans. And what a ball that was by Vidovic. He swept it out to Wiesek. Look at the movement. That was strictly come dancing hips that he showed. He was like a, a young Antoine Dubec as he made his way to the corner of the six-yard box. And he has almost passed it into the corner of the goal. And we have taken an early lead, but we cannot get too excited. This is a two-legged affair. And I'm not that good at two-legged affairs. I often manage to perform heroics in the first leg, only to then go and lose four or five nil in the second leg. And it's all a little bit of a damp squib, as you saw when we whimpered our way out of European competition earlier on this season with Lokomotiva. We've sent another ball into the box. It's Isak again. He's a big game player. He rises at the far post. He nods his header down. It bounces off the turf, skids up, strikes the woodwork. We've had five shots, three on target for an XG of almost one goal. And we have had a very decent first half. We press on. We look for a second. Hajduk are going to pose a threat. They've had two shots themselves, two on target. We've had a corner that we have sent harmlessly into the box. But the corner taker has got it back. He's fed Milanovic. Now Pavic. He's struck from outside of the box. That's fully 23, 24 yards out. He has curled it into the corner of the net and the playmaker has come up. Trumps, we are 2-0 up on the night, 2-0 up on aggregate. And that is a delicious effort. The goalkeeper waved at it as it went past him. And we are now 2-0 up. We do have a few tired players, I'm noticing, as the flares go off in front of us there. Apologies for that. The fans are getting a little bit excited. And we go in search of a third. It's Hamilton Rickard. We can barely see it as the flares go up. We've given the ball away. They're still in their own defensive third, though. And we've won it back. We've pressed them well. And Isex in again. And, oh, he's carbon copied the first strike that he had at goal. He swivels past the defender. This time, it's the woodwork he hits rather than the back of the net. The second time that he has collided the ball with the post during this game. But we go into half time. 2-0 in the lead. And the second period is underway. And we've got to keep an eye on Avia and Vidovic and Milanovic. All of them look like they are tiring. On 60, maybe 65 minutes, I think we'll have to ring the changes. We've got some reasonable players on the bench. And we won't necessarily weaken the side significantly like we would do at Lokomotiva when we made substitutions. But you would like your best players out there for a cup final. And we're not going to be able to do that. Past the 65-minute mark, I don't think. We're still pressing, though, in this game. Ten shots, five on target, only three during the entire match for Hajduk. And as we hit the 65-minute mark, there is one more highlight to see out before we make those changes. Isek's going to have to come off now. Probably we're going to have to take Beckham Avia off as well. Will it be 2-1 before we get there? Because Hajduk have the ball. They cross the halfway line. Here's Mufi, and in fact, he's going unchallenged, and he sent a ball out into the box that our goalkeeper has punched. And we've given away a penalty in the box, and we're going to be relying on Lorette to try and keep our clean sheet here. He goes the right way. In fact, looking at that, you'd think he probably should have saved that. Did he even get something on it? He didn't. He's just fallen to his left. He could have dropped onto the ball instead. It's now 2-1, and we're going to need the cavalry. We are back underway, and I think Hajduk's tails are up. We're on 68 minutes. They are coming forward again. Hamilton Rickard wins the ball. He got it out to Jey Uso, and now Vidovic. That's a tired pass from Vidovic, and he's given the ball away. He's got the chance to win it back. He doesn't, and instead, it's Hajduk that have another effort. They've hit the post. There's some very lazy tackling out there, and we whiz straight into the next highlight, and it's a poor pass. And I think we're going to have to take Vidovic off because he's tiring and our team is tiring and they've come from 2-0 down. It's Kiprianu. What a strike that is. That was equally as good as Pavic's was for us in the first half. It's Mufi raiding down the right flank. It's a poor, poor clearance. And Kiprianu sends one crashing against the bar. And on just 70 minutes, it's 2-2. 
And this cup final is up for grabs. And now we're looking at conceding a third. They've sent a corner to the edge of the box. We've headed it clear. And here is the 17-year-old Pilcic. He's got nobody with him, but he's got pace to burn. And he heads his way into the box and then passes it back to the goalkeeper. I cannot believe that was the highlight. Despite having more shots, Hajduk have now had more on target than we have. We've made our final two changes. Our squad is as refreshed as it can be. And there are still tired legs out there. Look at poor Uso. Look at Kamara. Gomez could do with coming off as well. But you've got to imagine Hajduk are tiring as well. Although not by the look of that tackle. We've won it back in the centre of the park though. Zerbin, one of the substitutes. Plays a 1-2 with the centre half and now we're coming forward again. It's Bresic, it's back to Gomez, it's patient. We've gone all the way back to Kamara. We send it out to Ricard. Can we seal a third goal that might give us a little, slight advantage going into the second leg? Here's Ricard, he feeds Vincek. We've got it into the box. I think Zerbin could be offside. The linesman has raised his flag. The referee doesn't even go to the VAR review. It is ruled out. And our hearts are broken on the 85th minute as the Italian substitute Zerbin turns the ball home. It counts for nothing. We're still in the tie. We're going to be home in the second leg. And if we win our league game next, we'll already be in Europe. And we're underway in game two against Rudesh. We're straight into a highlight. We've put the scores from the Croatian top flight up on the side of the screen as well between highlights. The game we're looking out for is Slavon Belupo versus Lokomotiva. We're the away team in this game, so we're playing in our salmon pink kits. And we've had to ring the changes a little because we had very tired legs. Hilchic stroked the ball into an unguarded net. I was looking for a linesman flag. I think this one's going to count. What a start that is to the game. I think we've rung about six changes for this game. We've rotated in two fresh strikers. Hilchich, the 17-year-old, is one of those. We've got new fullbacks on the right side. We've got two new wide players in as well. And as Beckham Avia has dropped out, trying to rest as many players as I can for that second leg. But also trying to get this game won. Because if we can win this game and Lokomotiva draw or lose in that Slavon Belupo game that's still locked at nil-nil right now, then we are going to qualify for Europe as the fifth place team, regardless of what happens in that second leg. Triore has scored a penalty. I've been keeping an eye on every Lokomotiva result. They only seem to have scored goals from penalties over the last five games, and they've got a decisive one today. Triore has scored it. We are still coming forward in our game. The players have probably not got the news yet as Pilchic races through. Once more, we're looking for a flag. Once more, I don't think it's coming. The 17-year-old has scored his second of the game. He celebrates in front of the fans. Zerbin, the Italian who's playing up front for us today, he's a veteran. Horvat is a Slovenian winger. He's in his 30s as well. These are good players that I don't necessarily see us having next season. But they're doing a good job today. And there's confirmation down in the bottom of the screen about that locomotiva goal. And that is the one that could well break hearts we're looking for Slavon Belupo to do us a favor in the second half of this game we've still got to win this one though Zerbin comes forward gives it to our reserve right back Goncalves and he's got the ball back from Kamara and he's coming forward and he's having a little jaunt potentially to the byline instead he just gives possession of the ball away wins it back Pilchic scores his hat trick this one has to be offside surely I think the referee's going to VAR review it. Indeed he is. He looked a mile off to me. He's been awarded. What do I know? That's three offside goals. He's the Croatian. Pippo and Zagi, as I see on the screen, the Lokomotiva have scored a second. I think we're going to win this game and it is all going to be in vain. And as we approach the end of the game, we've got a 4-1 win. But look at Lokomotiva. Football manager likes to tease, doesn't it? They've not won a game since we resigned from the club. And they've saved it until the final day of the season and they've scored four. And I think that is going to be enough to confirm them as the fifth place finishers in the Croatian top flight. We've done well to rally and come sixth. If only we hadn't drawn that one game. And if we'd have won every single one, we'd have done it. But instead, we've left ourselves needing a victory against Hajduk.
So here we go then. Game three of three. High Duke at home in the second leg of the cup final. We've just found out that both Isek and Pavic are going to be going to the World Cup with Croatia. Joining them at that tournament is going to be Jacob Uso, who's going there with the Ivory Coast. Despite being a wonder kid, we are going to leave them on the bench for today's game. And we're going to give 17-year-old Ante Pilcic the nod instead. Fresh from that hat-trick against Rudesh. That's their fourth goal that they've had in three starts in the top flight. And we're going to see whether they can help us to victory. One that we desperately need because now that we've not qualified for Europe through the league, this is our last hope. And if we lose today, I'm not sure where that leaves the quest. So here we are under the lights, locked in at 2-2, having been 2-0 up before half time in that first leg. I'd imagine it's Hajduk who are going to feel that they've got the upper hand after coming back, but they're going to have to come to our stadium and beat us if they want that trophy. If they do, I've no idea where that leaves this series because we'll be without European football. We can't move to Switzerland because young boys have just made a Europa Cup final, even though they lost it against Mulder. So I don't know what that would mean for the series. We'd have to go away and have a thoroughly good think. Let's hope that it doesn't come to that. Both teams have created good chances early on in this game, according to the XGs. We've had five shots, three on target. Neither team has made the breakthrough so far. And we are strolling our way through to the 35th minute and we've not had a highlight yet, but now we've got a corner that we send in. Kamara glances it across goal. Hines saves it. I'm not even sure that that's the full extent of the highlight. He fires it long. Gomez picks up the ball. We've got possession of it through Ricard. He feeds Ishek, and he's got players ahead of him. And one of those is Pilcic. He has a little swivel, sends the ball towards goal. It just moves past the post. But Ishek is looking like a big game player once more for us on that right flank. He's involved in everything we're doing so far. And here he is again, trying to get onto a ball lofted over the top. Their goalkeeper is wise to it. He comes out, wins possession for his side, sends it long. And they have won possession of the ball from our defence. They've sent it into our box. We clear it. Here's Vidovic, the wide playmaker over on the left. We've got the ball with a Villa. We're looking a little bit suspect back there. Our goalkeeper plays it forward. Chuck Palumbo gets it. And now it's Mufi, the hero from the first leg. He's fed Cali Sene, the second top scorer in the league. And just before halftime, we are a goal down. And the quest is crumbling. Oh, we've got to come out and have an almighty second half. Otherwise, I fear. The series is over. We're going to be left without European football next season. And even though we've come in and we've done a very good job, we're undefeated so far in our time in charge at Dinamo. It's all going to count for nothing unless we can find a goal. And who are we blaming? Is it 17-year-old Pilchich on a 6.4 or the idiot that picked a 17-year-old for a vital cup final ahead of a wonder kid? or? Are we going to dig ourselves out of trouble? I read the riot act to the players at half time. And in the second half, we've got a throw in. Vidovic feeds it back to the throw in taker. There's Beckham. Feeds the playmaker Pavic. It's taken a nick that's whizzed it past the goalkeeper. And we're locked back in at 3 3 on aggregate. And we've got more work to do. We've had 10 shots, six on target. We seem to have come out and tried to assert ourselves at the start of the second half. We need to try and find another goal if we can. And we've got some of our players that are tiring. We've made our first change. We've had to take Ishek off because he was really struggling for fitness. A lot of games for the young man. In his place, we've brought on a Swiss player, Marles, to play on the right wing. But it's led to a highlight for the opposition. They've got the ball with their defensive line. Sardell has got the ball under no pressure whatsoever as we sit in our mid block. We've got a good shape. But when they come into our half, we need to try and win the ball now. Chuck Palumbo has been pulling an awful lot of strings for them. Here's Frank Zappa. He sent the ball through. We're behind again. They're looking to the linesman to save them. There's no flag. I don't even think there's a VAR review for this one. And we are 2-1 down. And I think we're going to have to take Pilchich off. We're going to have to go to the bench and get the wonder kid on. 
And we're going to have to try and up the ante, maybe even go attacking. Because once more, it looks like the quest is over. Inside the final 23 minutes, we are throwing the proverbial kitchen sink at it. We have bought on Usu. We've also made a change over on the left wing. And we've got a highlight again, but alas, it is not for us. And it's Sene who sends an effort that our goalkeeper tips over the bar. We've made our fullbacks try and push up a little more as well to give us those overlaps where we might be able to send the ball out wide and deliver into the box. Our goalkeeper has come out and punched the ball from the corner. And we've managed to face them up, send them back, and the highlight is over. We're going to pause. We're going to send out a shout. We are going to demand more of the players. We've got 18 minutes, 17 minutes, 16 minutes left, and nothing is happening for us at the moment. We've got a goal kick. We started the ball right in our own box. Can we go all the way down the other end and score? Rickard now brings it forward, checks back. Kamara slows down the play. Can we feed the ball to one of our more creative players? We've done that now. Here's the Italian, Zerbin, on as a substitute. He's played a nice little one-two with Uso. He's in! And the Wonder Kid has scored! Why didn't we start him? Why? What? Did, why didn't we start him? But at least he's on the pitch now. And a little one-two, three, four with Zerbin. Releases him and he's on his left foot. And he just wrong foots the goalkeeper. He goes to his right. The ball goes to his left. And we are back in the tie again. Ten minutes to go. Who's read the rules? Do away goals count? Do we go to extra time? Will we get as far as that? Have we got a penalty shootout? I've not read them. I don't know. It's going to be as much a surprise to me as it is to you. We might not even get that far because Hajduk are coming forward again. And they're looking menacing. And they've struck again. Surely this time we're going to get the linesman's flag. They've got him behind our defence again. They've struck past our goalkeeper again. We're behind on aggregate again. And how do they keep making these runs without being marked? One of our central defenders has got sucked too far up the field. And we've got to try and find a third equaliser on the night. We've got six minutes to try and save this game, but the highlights seem to have dried up. In fact, we've made it all the way to the five minutes of stoppage time. We're going to go very attacking. We're going to try and ask the goalkeeper to come up. We've got one more highlight. We're in the 91st minute. Their goalkeeper lunges it forward. Pavic wins the ball. Gomez has got it now. Zerbin sends it forward to Uso. Why didn't we start him? It's our left back now. He's run into his opposition player. Sent a ball in regardless, and as a little header, their goalkeeper has made a complete mess of it, and it's 5-5 five, five on aggregate. If it's away goals, they've got three of them. I'm going to have to try and crack back in to the rules of the competition and see where on earth we stand. Okay, we're back. It's extra time and penalties, people. Extra time and penalties. There are no away goals. I've dropped it back down to positive from the very attacking. God bless their goalkeeper here, by the way. Hein has come and got nowhere near the ball. And Milanovic has just nodded into an unguarded net. 5-5 five, five against our eternal rivals on aggregate. 3-3 three, three on the night. And we're heading into extra time. Okay, nothing to see here. Just football manager doing its normal. We're in extra time of the potentially final ever episode of the quest if we lose it. And Iduka coming forward once more. It's Pushkas. He sent it back to Sardella. They're in behind our defence again. Do not let this ball come across our box. They have. He's given away a penalty. I thought he had. He hasn't. The ref didn't blow. Instead, they have a strike from the edge of the area. And goodness me, Hajduk have come roaring out for extra time. Frank Zappa now sends the ball back to Smolcic. We've made two extra substitutions at the end of the game to try and freshen it up a little. You'll see at left back and at centre half, we're looking pretty tired. Milanovic up front is struggling as well. But we can't make any more changes. They've had a header. It's gone just over the bar. We need to settle and then try and launch some attacks of our own. We're to the hundredth minute. We don't seem to have really come out for the first half of extra time. We've had 17 shots, 10 on target. It's half time. We're going to have to press on and go again. We're going to pause the game. We're going to throw out a shout. We're going to encourage the team 
We've had 18 shots now to our opponent's 12, 10 of them on target, only six for the opposition. We've got no more substitutions to make. So if this is going to penalties, we're going to have to rely on the players that are out there. And penalties is exactly what it's come down to. And it's going to be Hajduk to take first. We are relying on our goalkeeper to try and perform heroics. Lorette goes the right way. But on this occasion, it goes just out of his reach. Marles, the Swiss sub, comes on and scores the first for us. We are literally hanging on to this series by a thread right now. It all comes down to spot kicks. Frank Zappa sends Lorette the wrong way. I do a 2-1 up. And here's Milanovic, who scored that header in stoppage time to take us to extra time. He makes no mistake from the spot. Now we're locked in at 2-2. Here is Prasad. Florette has got to get one of these, surely. And it's this one. Yeah, I think he's tipped it round the post. It could have been a miss. And now Zerbin has the chance to give us a slender advantage. Here is the Italian. It's not a good penalty. But Hein gives up on it. And now we could really stamp our authority with another save. Here is Pushtas. Oh, he's gone the right way, Lorette, but it's just out of his reach once more. Here's the wonder kid. He scored in normal time. Here is Jey Uso, and he has scored. And if they miss this one, we've won the cup and we're in Europe. Even if they score it, we would have the chance to seal it with our fifth. Here is Smolchik. Come on, Lorette. Come on, Lorette. One big save. He's gone the wrong way. And the pressure on this player walking up now is going to be huge. A series rests on the shoulder of Cyril Vincek, our deputy deep-lying playmaker. He runs up, he strikes, he scores. We've won the cup. We've beaten Hajduk. We've done it the hard way. We're going to go up to the podium where... They're not wearing red glasses this time, but it seems to be two twins. Maybe Jey Uso has, has brought some fellow Samoan wrestlers in to present the trophy. And it's going to be one that means that we do qualify for Europe. It's not the Conference League like I thought it would be. Instead, it's going to be the Europa League proper. And now we've got to go away and try and build a squad capable of challenging for that trophy in what looks like. It could be one epic final season of the quest.